Hello everybody, Daniel Gaines here again. Going to be going over some more information. This time I'm going to be showing some of the lies that she's had her family's told. This time we're going to specifically highlight her father, who's a doctor, Dr. James Meredith Noel, in the San Antonio area. He's a pediatric gastroenterologist, but let's let's get into things. Let's start. This is the judge that's that was on some okay. bullshit. He's going to say his name. Telephone. This is Dr. James. Barrett Noel. All right. And Mr. Noel, do uh, you swear and affirm to tell the truth in everything you say today? I do. Okay. And the reason you're on the phone, sir, is that, uh, and by the way, you're on the record and you're testifying right now. I'm... Uh, Superior Court Commissioner Sauerlander, and we have your daughter present. We also have Daniel Gaines on the phone, and we have uh, his attorney also present. And you'll be subject to a direct examination by your Hang daughter. Did, uh, you were in the Army for 30 years. Uh, that is. After Daniel and I split up, when I went down to Thibodeau to um, move back into the house down there around the time that Faith was one year old, um, and Daniel was giving Faith a bath, and he bit her in response to him biting. Um, do you recall me sending you the pictures of the Jackson bite marks? Lacks personal knowledge. Okay, I sent go, go the ahead and ask, ask the question. of the bite marks to you and asked whether or not it would heal okay or if she needed emergency care, and you informed me that because it was just Jackson a bruise. Jackson testified. Just uh, go ahead and ask your question, ma'am. Okay. Do you remember getting those pictures and telling me how I should treat that wound? I remember seeing the bite mark of faith and that I had told you that was inappropriate discipline and that there was nowhere in the medical literature that supports biting a child to teach them not to bite. It rather reinforces the biting. As far as the injury was concerned, it was a bite mark that left marks, which by definition is child abuse. And um, I thought that the wounds would heal without problem. Okay. And that deep bruises, they did not leave anything that would be infectious. All right. And, sir, did you see that bite being given? or? No, I did not. I just saw the picture of it. All right. And you believed it was child abuse. Did you... I don't know if you're a mandatory reporter down uh, where you reside, but... Well, you're a mandatory reporter in all 50 states, but I did not report it. I told them that that was inappropriate uh, discipline and that this should not occur and it could be reported for child abuse. I took it as a lack of knowledge and a lack of um, appropriate discipline. And I did not uh, view it as a pattern that needed to be reported at that time. <clears throat> now, notice that. Now, if you remember from one of the other videos, Juliet claimed her father treated it, but now she's saying, do you remember me sending you pictures? How can a doctor treat something with just pictures? She, he didn't treat it. But then he says it's child abuse and then turns around and says, I'm a mandated reporter, but I didn't report it. Why would a mandated reporter not report child abuse, especially when it's his own granddaughter? He's a mandated reporter. But let's continue. Okay, ma'am, your next question. Um, the next question would be that um, when I first got sick with lymphoma in 2005, uh, I sent Faith to go stay with Daniel. And when she was returned, she had a, a very infected bleeding diaper rash. Um, and I brought her to you because the ointments that I had been using weren't working. And do you recall me bringing her to you and what your response was to this? Yeah, she had a severe yeast infection that was bleeding. And we often see yeast infections in children when the sugar content of their diet is very high. Now... To this, why is it that none of this was ever mentioned any time before until 2015? If she had a very bad yeast infection that was bleeding and everything else, why was it never said before? And also, why did Juliet neglect to mention that 
my daughter and her daughter, our child, had a severe acid reflux problem and was actually on reflux medicine from the time she was literally just a couple months old until, well, I honestly don't know till when, but until some point later on in her life. That was neglected and everything else. But let's continue. Oh, here we go. I don't specifically remember the conversations you had with Daniel, but I remember one conversation I had with Daniel where he threatened mom, myself, and our entire family and uh, used vulgar language and uh, intimated we were a bunch of uh, 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 people that uh, were not Okay, now there. Notice how he says I was making threats to the family, cussing them out, and saying that they didn't have the same moral code I did. Okay, we're going to get into his declaration here in just a minute. Where we're going to, yeah, I'll that, I'll go into that. He he says I, I threatened to kill him and his wife in his declaration, but that's not what he says here. But let's continue. Okay, next question. Oh, yeah, the little wow you just heard was me saying wow in response to his. that I wasn't supposed to be talking at that point because it wasn't my turn yet. But, yeah, that's what I said in response to him directly on the phone. Wow. Just, that's just all I could say at that point. Um, Daniel stated that the last time he saw Faith was actually on her, the day of her fourth birthday. Um, and do you remember on that day... Um, whether or not Daniel was actually present or whether I had actually gone off trying to find him at his hotel where he was not Objection available. All right. Do you, sir, do you remember? The last time I saw Daniel was at a birthday party that was at a pool at an apartment complex next to Sonterra. I have not seen Daniel since that time. I have had two phone calls, actually three phone calls now from Daniel. One where he called up recently uh, saying that he was, due to problems in Washington, he was going to uh, sue to have uh, custody of faith given to him. And I can only say that the times I have met with Daniel, he could not look me in the eye. He has not ever proven himself to be honored with it. The one time we leased the house to him, to take care of, he left it to the condition. And okay, I, there's been an objection, <laughs> sir. Uh... Okay, we're going to pause there. Anyway, never looked him in the eye. Lying piece of shit. I fixed you and your daughter's relationship at one point. I ain't helped you and your wife's relationship, you lying f puke. But anyway, as far as the last contact goes, he claims it was at a birthday party. Well, he would obviously have to be talking about my daughter's fourth birthday party. I guess he forgets the day of her fourth birthday party. I wasn't there. That was the day after her fourth birthday. I didn't get to go. I guess he also forgets that his daughter was going to leave me stranded in San Antonio around my daughter's fourth birthday. And he's actually the one that drove from his house to the hotel to pick me up and then drove me to the airport so I could get home. During which we had a conversation about why his daughter quit, uh, wouldn't pick me up for the party and everything else. In which I told him Juliet got mad at me because I told her I thought it was crap that she made my daughter sleep on the floor for her fourth birthday all because my child was hungry because she didn't eat much for dinner. She was more worried about playing with me, spending time with me. So because she wanted food, Juliet made her sleep on the floor, took the mattress out of her room, literally, and made her sleep on the floor. But let's continue. I'm going to sustain that objection. That's not relevant to the court's inquiry today. I do have a question for you. And when he called you, uh, did he threaten to kidnap Faith? Or did he say that he was going to file a motion for modification and sue for custody? So he was going to sue for custody. There you go. You now let's go to this see, point. Did Mr. Gaines ever uh, reside in Texas? Yes. And, and see right there, when did I reside in Texas? 
I've never been a resident of the state of Texas. Never in my life. Tell me what year I resided in Texas. I dare you. Because I'm going to make you look stupid if you give a year. I promise. I'll be able to prove otherwise. So give me the year I lived in Texas. You make these claims. Back them up. Back them up, liar. Let's see your proof. When did I live in Texas, James? Come on, Jimmy boy. Tell me. And did you ever see actual... Let's see in this last point. Did you ever call the police? Hold on. I have not seen him physically abuse either Juliet or Faith. I have heard him threaten to. Okay. And but did yet, you ever call the police when you heard that? But yet he claims he's heard me threaten Juliet, his child, but yet the man never once never once called the police. He's never once listed a threat in his declarations, and we're going to go over his declarations right now. He's never once mentioned uh, any of this stuff, but yet he said it's at the restraining order hearing. Now, this was 5-20-15, right? As you see. This, June 19th, 2015. A month later, Declaration of James M. Noel. Case number, it's all legit. Okay, real court documents here. Y'all know I'm showing you the real stuff anyway. I ain't hiding nothing from anybody. I'm being honest. But let's go through. Here he said, me and Juliet lived in Thibodeau, Louisiana from October 3rd to August, from October 2003 to August 2005. When my daughter and Daniel separated, he was to continue to pay the rent on the house we had co-signed for and helped them purchase. He was to continue to occupy the home which Juliet and Daniel had purchased. Daniel, however, was fired from his job cleaning oil tankers in Port Fouchon, Louisiana, for showing up intoxicated and failing a urine, drug, and alcohol screen. The company was Clean Tank LLC. Daniel was arrested and pled guilty to driving under the influence July 20, uh, 26 July 2005, and Tammany Parish and pled guilty to the charge. Now... The thing of it is, I had a job at a place called Diamond Plating in Illinois, Madison, Illinois, at this point. So clearly, I couldn't have lived at his house that he's talking about. I couldn't have had the job down here that he's talking about. I couldn't have been fired for drug and failed drug and alcohol and showing up to work drunk. And I've shown y'all. My background reports. But hold on, we'll get to that in a minute. I, I promise I'll get to that. I'll get to that again in a second. And this says when Daniel abandoned this property, he left it in uninhabitable condition. He had not paid the water or utility bills and defecated in the toilets, urinated in the toilets to the point of overflowing. My wife and I had to clean the house and facilities so that we could we could sell the home. Again, my employment records prove that I was not there at the time he says. Period. I was actually served a restraining order from Juliet whenever with the initial divorce. And that's whenever I left and went back to Illinois for good. Period. Employment records will show it. Anyway, he then says Daniel has other arrests in Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana. That include two arrests for failing to wear a seatbelt, one arrest for running a stop sign, and one arrest for fishing without a license. These arrests are of public record and I have sent a copy of the arrest record for Daniel along with this letter. Now, the arrest record was never submitted to the courts. And then we still have this. Report dated. No criminal or sex offender records for found for this individual. But yet here's her daddy, who's a doctor. Supposed to be ethical. Under code of ethics and everything as a doctor. But yet here he is intentionally... And maliciously lying on a document that, oh yes, is signed under penalty of perjury. But let's continue. This goes on to say that after Juliet and Daniel separated, he initially took interest in visiting his child. He took his child home with him. When the child would return from visitation, she also had yeast infections from a diet heavy in candies, sodas, and sweets. For a one to two year old child, she would return to Juliet's care at our home with uh, yeast diaper rashes that required antifungal medications to treat 
and which had been neglected for over a week. One time when she had bit Daniel, meaning my daughter, he responded by biting her and leaving teeth marks. Now, notice this doesn't mention anything about the bleeding that we had ju- that he had just said. A month later, it's something different. And then he mentions the bite marks like he actually witnessed it or whatever else. But yet, again, he said he didn't see it. He only seen pictures. He goes on to say, I have a history of paying about 24 months of child support since Juliet and uh, myself divorced in 2004. He has not visited the child, my child in over six years, has not sent Christmas cards or birthday cards. Now, again, in child support records will show that it was more than 24 months. And it's hard to send Christmas and birthday cards when you literally don't know where they're at. But we'll get into that in a minute. Hold on. We're getting there. I promise. He threatened my wife and I with murder and violent acts when we filed suit for damages to the property in Thibodeau. Needless to say, I have little respect or regard for Daniel E. Gaines and can only see that Daniel's goal in seeking visitations and parenting rights at this point is vengeful in nature. I feel strongly that his... Parenting rights and visitation should be terminated. Terminated. Now, why didn't he say that I threatened to kill them here? But yet here he's saying I threatened to kill them whenever they... How did he phrase it? I want to make sure it's right. Oh, sorry. Wrong paragraph. Uh, I threatened he and his wife with murder and and violent acts when they filed suit for damages to the property in Cibido. Now... Look up everything. Look at look it up. You will not find anything where he filed any kind of suit for any kind of damages against me. It doesn't exist, but yet he makes the claim in here without any kind of proof. Just false claims. And then he says, we have visited Juliet, Cody, and the children while they were residing in Rockport, Texas in February, following their accident with explosive powder in Washington and again in the summer, and again in the summer in Greatview, Washington. The children were well-adjusted children and are doing well in school they are outgoing active and interactive and certainly do not display any signs of abuse or being in a family situation that is anything but supportive the these visits have occurred occurred following the explosion which occurred in their home the children's only concerns following the explosion was the health of their mother and cody they were not traumatized and have handled the situation quite well now explosive powder that's contradictory to the police report. So either his child's been, li- meaning Juliet, has been lying to him about things, or again, he's lying to the courts trying to minimize what his daughter was actually arrested for. And then it says, as to Daniel's allegations that he could not contact Juliet for the past eight years, this allegation is also untrue. As a physician, my name is easily found with a Google search. My phone number, my work phone number at the University of New Mexico was as and is available off of the internet Google search. Daniel never attempted to contact me in New Mexico. I have had the same phone number since November 2008. My cell phone number is available through directory information. Now, oh, hold on. I want to be thorough. So here's the pictures that he says he took of the house that he allegedly rented me that I couldn't have possibly been living in during the time frame he said I was living in. Now, One thing to keep in mind about that last paragraph that I read, right? He he's correct. He does. He is a doctor. His his work number is public. It can be found easily and everything else. However, cell phone records from the 2015 court stuff will show that I had to call his work uh, his work number probably more than 30 different times. And then straight tell them, I will not stop calling until he calls me back just to get a response from him, just to find out if my ex-wife, Juliet, and my daughter were still in the Washington area so I could try and get my daughter away from her mother in 2015 after I learned of the explosives. So it's not as cut and dry as he claims. Now, this one, September 8th, 2015. May 20th, 2015. Again, declaration of James Noel. This is in regards to a motion to relocate. Wife of 41 years, her dad saying his wife of 41 years, Carol, experienced a stroke on, in October of 2013. <clears throat> now, it's 
it's still one of them things that I mean I feel bad for and everything else, but we'll continue because it's it's it plays a part in that that right there plays a part in this. We have employed a nursing company since October that has been taking care of our appointments and helping with hygiene at the cost of six hundred and fifty dollars per week. We have two diff- used two different companies providing the service. The reason for Juliet to come here to help her mother and my bride recover, I need to continue with my employment if I have to continue helping defend against Daniel's frivolous lawsuits so I could not just retire and help Carol. Furthermore, the therapist felt that the grandchildren and Juliet would really awaken the the desire to communicate in Carol and redouble her work effort. That last part's only, I don't know why I put that in there, but either way, he's proof right here that he's been helping fund her keeping my child from me. A doctor. Let's continue. I mean, that's all for this one, but as you see, signing under penalty of perjury and everything else. Now, this, like I said, again, this part here was in uh, for her notice to relocate, right? Now, Notice how her dad's talking about six hundred and fifty bucks a week. How he's wanting, he's gonna pay her to do it. Uh, he says in there that he's gonna pay her to do it uh, the same amount and everything else. Well, this is where we get into things. Child has lived with uh, Juliet the entire life, other than the first five months. She has not lived in the same state as Daniel. Therefore, her, therefore, her location of residence shouldn't matter. He has not developed any relationship with the child. He has not taken advantage of the visitation provided in the current parenting plan, even though he has known my location and contact information. And he has clearly, undisputedly had this information for for the past several months and has still not chosen to visit his child, despite me actively trying to assist him in setting up a visit back in July for her birthday. He did not even mail her a birthday card and refused to come visit her. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be vital here in a few minutes. She's saying, I didn't send my child a birthday card. I don't contact her or anything else. So keep that in mind. Here she says, so it would be extremely detrimental detrimental to her to, dis, to her to disrupt contact between my daughter and her mother, as well as between her and her little brother. There would be no disruption between her and Daniel, as there has been zero contact between her and Daniel for more between her and Daniel for more than half her life, due to malicious mother. Daniel has supervised visitations for being uh, abusive physically and mentally to both myself and the child and being neglectful to the child while caring her for her. Now, she's never alleged neglect before. It's only been physical abuse, uh, blah, blah, blah. Got a lot of issues. But again, this is the part that I want you to really focus on for now, right? But let's, but we'll, we'll, we're, get, we're getting there, I promise. After living with me for 12 years and her brother for six years, not being able to move with me would be traumatic. Also, watching me go through chemotherapy and other medical treatment in Washington, where I live, where I don't have family to to help me, would be very traumatic as well. This is where she's claiming that she has cancer and that she needs to be able to go live with her Texas. Here she says her dad is offering her $2,000 a month to take care of her mom. She says the school my child is now attending in Texas has testing scores far above, supposed to be above national and state standards. The school the child is now attending in Texas. Support my request to relocate with the child. My daughter was still supposed to be in the state of Washington at this point. My daughter's birthday is in July. Okay. Keep that in mind. In July... I wasn't trying to see her whenever Julia was trying to facilitate and everything else. Uh, and then, then additionally, the, uh, my daughter has been placed in several P- pre-AP classes at the school in Texas where she will be able to take her advanced reading and literature abilities and challenge them daily in the classroom. Again, saying that the child is already in Texas. Daniel hasn't lived in the same state or even close to the child since she was five months old and hasn't seen her in eight years, so his access to her won't change with the move. Additionally, it is $700 cheaper to fly to San Antonio from his location in Missouri than to fly to Seattle. Plus, in San Antonio, we will be living about 15 minutes from the airport rather than the 1.5 hours we currently live. Again, difficult to see a kid when you don't know where she's at, but we'll get into that later. 
It'd be several months before trials could be had. In the meantime, the child's school year is proceeding. She needs to be in the new school and have the consistency of the school and the superior programs the new school offers to her. Now, here she's saying she needs that the child needs to get down there to go to school after she said that she's already in the school. The nice just to be thorough to show the rest of the page. But I mean, it's she's already saying that she's there. There's where she's talking about she's being offered two thousand dollars a month and blah blah blah. But she's talking about sending a child, getting a child ready for school after the child's already in school. Now again, September eighth, the same day. Okay. Hers was filed at ten ten a.m. Mine was filed at 3.43, the very same day, okay? Same case number and everything else. It's all legit. This is my declaration for motion to, re to relocate. I have been receiving multiple text message messages from Ms. Parker on almost a daily basis. I have requested that she stop contacting me directly and go through our respective attorneys. I know that once Ms. Parker is allowed to relocate to Texas, that she will disappear again. And that's what happens every time. As for the lack of personal service, I am only the only notice of relocation that I have received list her attorney's address as the place to deliver the objection. The address that Ms. Parker submitted initially with the domestic violence protection order in May of 2015 was blah, 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 Grapeview Drive, Grapeview, Washington. Now she's claiming that she lives at in Belfair, Washington, which means that either Ms. Parker lied about her residential address or she moved without notice of a relocation after I filed a petition to modify the parenting plan. Which again, court records will back this up. So she obviously wasn't giving me notices of relocations, or she wasn't being forthcoming with a truthful, with an honest and correct address. Okay, hold on. Keep in mind, though, she said I didn't try to see my kid or anything else in July in the state of Washington where my daughter was supposed to be. In regards to Miss Parker's request to relocate immediately, I believe that Miss Parker is already re relocated. Miss Parker has admitted that she sent my child to Texas on May 5th, 2015. But wait, I didn't send my kid a birthday card or come see her for her birthday in the state of Washington because I chose not to. But yet, sent my daughter to Texas on May 5th, before even the restraining order hearing. As soon, right after I talked to her daddy, she sent my kid out of state without telling anybody, me or the courts. The courts didn't even know my kid was out of state. Let's continue. Miss Parker claims that this was for a visit. However, my child has not returned to Washington at all. Miss Parker moved my child in May of 2015 and is now asking for asking permission after the fact. Miss Parker did not give the required notice to relocate when she moved. Okay. If Miss Parker does have cancer, then the treatment for that cancer will make her too sick to care for her mother. Again, she's wanting to go to Texas to care for her mother, as her father claimed, but yet she's going to go down there and have cancer treatments. Father claims taking care of the mother. She's claiming cancer treatment. My mother died of cancer. Okay? That's serious. Cindy Lou, Cindy Lou Gaines, you can look into it. Granite City, Illinois. She died of uh, cancer. And... While she was undergoing treatment, she wasn't fit enough to take care of anybody else. I had to help take care of her, help her put her on a bedpan so she can pee before she was before that she wasn't before she was bedridden when she was able to get up and walk. There were times we had to help her to the bathroom and everything else. But let's continue. In regards to her mother's stroke, Ms. Parker submitted a declaration in this matter that states that she moved to Texas in 2014 to care for her mother because she had a stroke in June of 2014. Ms. Parker made that statement because I had stated that she has a track record of fleeing jurisdiction to avoid prosecution or court orders. Ms. Parker's mother did not have a stroke until October of 2014. Wait a minute. Didn't a good doctor say that his wife had a stroke in 2013? Why did his Facebook page say it was in 2014? Which, again, the information pictures of that was submitted to the courts. But yet in his document, it's over in that stack, he listed the 2013 date. But I digress. Didn't have the stroke until October of 2014. After Miss Parker had moved back to Washington, in her notice, which it was, it was, it was after she moved back to Washington, in her notice of intended relocation, she states the same that same excuse again as to why she needs to go to Texas, which she did. She stated that uh, she actually submitted two declarations. She submitted an amended one after my attorney filed this, but in it, uh, in the first one, she states that she had to go care, help care for her mother due to the stroke. But anyway, 
In her two declarations, the original states that she went to Texas in 2014, not because she was in legal trouble, but because she had to care for her mother, had a stroke, had a stroke. In her amended declaration, she states that she went to Texas during the, that time to visit her new boyfriend's parents. However, I had submitted a, I have submitted a document which shows that during that time she was in legal trouble in Texas. She was not at either and in, and not at either location, which I did. I submitted documents that proved that they had. Anyway, it's right here. This location is three hours away from Mr. Hyman's family and is about two hours away from Miss Parker's family. She claims via text messages that the original declaration was nothing more than a typo done by the paralegal at her attorney's office, which means that either Miss Parker did not read the declaration that was submitted under penalty of perjury or she was not being truthful. And she did. She sent me a text message that claimed, oh, the attorney, it was a typo from the attorney, but yet it was... I'll be getting into her declarations and my declarations real soon. So you guys will be able to judge for yourself if you think it's a typo. But I've never seen a typo that changes multiple complete stories. Anyway, Miss Parker has a history of changing her stories each time I point out different things that are wrong with it. Each time I mention something in a declaration, she amends her declaration to change her story. Each time something is submitted to the court, she changes her story to include the new things. Each time her story changes. She states that her father cannot afford the care his wife requires. But yet her father didn't mention nothing about not being able to afford it. Anyway, however, he is a retired colonel having served more than 30 years. He is getting a retirement as well as full health coverage for him and his wife from that, which he does. He is still a doctor now in private practice. The average starting salary for a pediatric GI doctor in San Antonio is $250,000 a year. This is right out of college with no experience. A doctor with more than 35 years experience will start at about $750,000 a year. Plus, he has insurance through his clinic. Not only is he making close to a million a year, if not more, he has two different medical insurance. He's paying nothing out of pocket for his wife's care. Even if there was something he had to pay, he makes more than enough annually to afford it. And again, the numbers don't lie. Six fifty a week to care for his wife. That's what he makes. There's it, he can afford it. Whereas Juliet claimed that her dad couldn't afford it. Ah, didn't it? I have never agreed to. Uh, as for the parenting plan, I do not agree to have no access to my child. I have never agreed to that. Miss Parker's attorney stated that the adequate cause hearing that I voluntarily have not been a part of my child's life. In the same breath, she stated that Miss Parker has not notified me of most of her moves. So does that make sense? I'm not, I mean, I voluntarily am not part of my kid's life, but most of the time I don't know where my kid is. I did, I, I, I'm confused. Then say, uh, even now she has re relocated my child months before even notifying the courts. I was not given notice of the, this relocation until two months after it happened, which is correct. Even the courts didn't know about, know about that one. Miss Parker was ordered by the courts in California to allow me to speak with my child. The judge issuing was issuing orders that were getting stricter on me. Miss Parker each time clearly shows that she refused to allow me to have any relationship with my child. Those documents are in Mason County. Well, I mean, I have them, but they're in Mason County that 